Okay, um, we're almost done for the day. There's just one little thing we need to do. So if I may ask you to take your seats, this is going to be a fun session just before you break out for the cocktails where you can do more networking. Okay, I don't want to get in the middle of uh, your networking session. So we're going to just close off in a very simple way. When was the last time you put a popcorn in a, in a microwave? Recently? No? Do you know what happens when you put the popcorn in the microwave? It pops. That's right. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to stand up as a popcorn, so you pop, and you share one salient uh, thing that you heard today and one thing that you learned. Okay? So somebody has to get us started. So you need to just pop and just say one salient finding and one thing that you learned. I know the first one is always the hardest. But when you do it, then the others will just flow. Yes, thank you, Kelly. Right. So but, but you probably need a microphone. <laughs> yeah, a drone would be great. Yes. Okay, so this is from the Advances in Qualitative Data Analysis, um, Humans and Machines Learning Together. And what I thought was uh, fascinating was not only do we, have, do we need to keep humans in the loop, the humans have to say what the loop means why it matters, and what the loop should look like. Great. And, and I guess, Kelly, in your capacity working in ICT, you know that if you do not listen to the user, you're going to deliver something that is not what they want. <laughs> and it's not, it's not going to be used. Exactly. 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 Thank you. And one thing that you learned. Um, I, well, you know, I have to say, I was in, the, um, I was in another, another session before, and I learned that I have to go back to statistics. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Okay, it was it was, it was very interesting. It was like, wow, boy, do I need help? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, yes, Alessandra, over there. So, what was the major takeaway, right? So, really, I think that machine learning can really use to enhance the credibility of policy analysis, and we really we can bring it in the evaluator toolbox, right? We just need to bring the data scientists and the econometricians together and talk to each other and work together. So there are lots of exciting work, which I just have to embrace innovation. That's it. And how long do you think it's going to take before you can implement such a thing? Very soon. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that you learned, Alessandra. So I learned that um, actually most of the times it's really a matter of jargon. So can we over overcome the jargon and really work together? What I, what I also learned is that there are many things that we do already as evaluators, particularly when you, we use observational data that um, data scientists use, right? So it's actually really, we need to make an effort to work closely. So I learned that in impact evaluation, I can actually use lasso regression to adjust for covariate balancing. So the gap is not that wide. Maybe it's just a mindset gap. Huh? Yes. And, and to have more conversations. Exactly. Great. OK, who wants to go next? Cosanza? Hello. Um, I was in the session on the, um, the use of technologies, and particularly 
uh, machine learning uh, to support um, systematic reviews and data gaps. And one of the things that we learn is there is a huge potential for the use of technologies, particularly to conduct systematic reviews, just to support the um, search, screening, and extraction of data. Um, it will help uh, to reduce at least 70% of the time dedicated to search hundreds and thousands of um, documents and um, drafts. Uh, however, even when technology can um, replace a lot of processes that are required to conduct um, systematic reviews, that's not necessarily, we're not necessarily at the stage where it can fully replace the work that uh, evaluators of researchers are doing. There's a still um, part of the work that we need to do, but certainly reducing 70% of the time of processes that may take one year or two years um, to be done, it can certainly help a lot in terms of policy and decision making. Great, very good. Okay, this side of the room. Oh, don't be shy. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, breakthrough session four, five, mobile-based data collection tools for program monitoring and evaluation. Uh, our takeaway is that due to the new advances in ICTs and the extensive use of mobile networks and communication devices worldwide, mobile-based uh, data collection tools for program monitoring and evaluation, uh, together with good information management, is, prov is proving that in most cases, it is a time server and a powerful tool for gathering and transmitting information from the field. Uh, lesson learned. It's a, a very condensed uh, statement. The migration from traditional data collection system to mobile-based data collection faces considerable uh, challenges. As to name some of them, the selection of the most appropriate technical solution, ensuring the availability of necessary infrastructure, training the users in the field, and uh, to assure uh, the acceptance of the tools by the users, uh, government, and involving the beneficiary of uh, this thing. Okay. Thank you. So we come back to the notion of we have to be people-centered. So it's not just technology for technology's sake, but it's technology to serve a purpose and serve people. Sir? Sir? Uh, two things. One, I learned that ICTs and big data are crucial for monitoring and evaluation functions, but it turns out that evaluators were not yet there. Second, uh, that these running machines techniques can help us to improve our, how we conduct our evaluations, especially for impact evaluations. Great, thank you. Yes. All right, hi. Um, in our session about um, impact evaluations in the field of environment, um, I think a great takeaway was that um, remote sensing satellite data are not a silver bullet, but can be really effective if they're integrated into a mixed method approach. Um, and I think one thing um, I learned was that, um, there's you are, you can actually have um, a cooperation with, with NASA without uh, going into space um, <laughs> and doing useful work for evaluators. <laughs> okay, great. Yes. Thank you. I was in session one, which is simulated field visit uh, in fragile and conflict situations. Um, the key lesson I learned is ICT absolutely opens the door for evaluators to be able to conduct a project evaluation in these inaccessible areas um, by using uh, photographs and GPS, etc. But there are two preconditions. First of all, project staff have to have the capacity to using these facilities. And secondly, um, the facilities should be available. So two dimensions, human beings and technology. That's our key lesson. Thank you. Thank you. That seems to be a common theme across all of your breakout groups. So People-centered and capacity building. Go ahead. Yes. Um, yes, I was in session 10 on participatory beneficiary analysis. And I learned that there are software and approaches that can support a more inclusive evaluation process, especially with beneficiaries. 
I think the lesson that I learned was also there's more training that needs to be done to bridge that gap. Great. Uh, yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I learned that uh, you cannot scribble in the margins of a digital survey. Uh, <laughs> but there's, technically, it should be feasible. <laughs> if you have a tablet, you can. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, anyone else? Okay, may I ask our, yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, just something from the early morning speakers about uh, the fact that every data point has a story and mm -hmm. has information to tell. I think that was really cool and interesting for me to go away with. Thank you. I agree with you. And with that, may I ask our keynote speakers to share with us the one thing that your salient takeaway and one thing that you learned. It's incredible to see there's a whole lot of innovation already going on in this community. And I think it's wonderful to have this opportunity to learn from each other, but we do need to find a way to really help to diffuse the knowledge and, and to embolden us. Um, to, to feel uncomfortable is the starting point <coughs> because I do see the two tendencies uh, in our discussion. Uh, we really need to feel, uh, we, we need to be informed so that we can break away from where we're feeling comfortable and be more innovative. Thank you. Yes, uh, moving away from our comfort zone and exploring the uncharted waters. Uh, yes. Um, okay. You're the session owners. Anybody wants to share their own, uh, um, what they've learned and what a salient take away from, from themselves, from what they've heard uh, today? No, they're tired? Okay. Um, if there isn't anyone else who would like to share a salient point of takeaway and what they've learned, we can call this a day. I thank you all for, for really participating so actively. I hope you had an enjoyable day. I hope you did learn, uh, and, and I thank you for being so open in sharing uh, your ideas and your, and your thoughts. There is a cocktail outside by the executive dining room, so I encourage you to continue your networking there. Tomorrow morning, we shall be resuming in the plenary session at uh, 9 o'clock sharp. Make sure you get a good night's sleep, because tomorrow morning is going to be very, very intense. We're going to have Dave Snowden give us a keynote address, uh, and um, I am 100% sure it's going to be amazing. So have a lovely evening, and thank you very much for a wonderful day. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One thing that I forgot, there is going to be shuttle bus so to take you back uh, to the metro station at the end of the uh, reception. And if you don't want to take the shuttle bus, the guards will call you a cab.